Hey Martin, you brought a map. Yeah, Chris, I just came back from a hike, which I logged in the app Take a Hike. They built a system for logging your hikes online. It is serverless and exposes data from a Cloud SQL database as a REST API. In a previous episode, we showed how one can build serverless REST APIs. In this episode, we'll see how they made sure that each user can only access their own logged hikes. Anna is a developer working for Take a Hike, a service for logging your hikes. She built a REST API to enable users to track their activity from a web and mobile app. It turns out it's quite easy to build a REST API in Cloud Run. As a bonus, Cloud Run is serverless, so there are no servers to manage, and Take a Hike will only pay per call with no fixed costs. Anna built the REST API in Cloud Run as a proof of concept. Now that it's working well, she needs to address security. A user should only be able to view and edit their own hikes, not those of other users. Anna's first thought is that the server would send the user's ID to the web client when that user logs in. The web client would then send the user's ID back to the server when accessing the REST API. But there is a problem. Anna remembers that one cannot trust code running on the client. A malicious user could modify the client code so it sends a different user ID than the one it received from the server. We're back where we started. Any client can read any recorded hike. Anna does some research and finds a technology that might help, JSON Web Tokens, or JOTS. When the client app logs in, it gets the user ID from the server signed by the server. The client app then attaches the JSON Web Token to any REST calls it makes to the server. But Anna wonders, is there a way to stop a malicious user from modifying this token? As part of the JOTS standard, the server signs all tokens digitally. If the client app modifies the token and sends it back to the server, the server will know that it was tampered with and can refuse the call. This means that Anna's code that runs on the server can trust the user ID it gets from the client. She can use that user ID in her SQL code when looking up the user's recorded hikes. This sounds great in principle, but would it be hard for Anna to write this code? She doesn't have any experience with cryptography. Yeah, whenever you write security-related code like this, it's best to lean on well-tested libraries. If Anna does that, there's less risk of leaving a security hole open. Fortunately, she doesn't have to create the JSON web token. Google's servers do that. And when she decodes the token, she can use a library provided by Google. This is really cool. What does the code look like? Tune into a future episode and we'll see Anna's code. Hey Martin, where did you hike to? Uh, I walked over to the refrigerator. Well, I uh, suppose you can take a long hike next time. <laughs>